Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage in the beautiful, sunny, warm state of Maine. Today, anyway, that's how spring is. You never know day to day. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to order a transmission. If you've spent any time shopping on any of the major transmission manufacturers' websites or your local speed merchant's website, you'll see lots of stages and levels. Uh, we used to laugh about that, but I fully understand why it is that way. What they're trying to accomplish is to get you to pre-read the options that might be available. You have an idea of the horsepower and weight of your vehicle that you want to put this transmission into. And by going through the series and stages and levels, and there's usually a price, so you kind of get used to what, you know, it's going to cost to hopefully cover and absorb the horsepower that you may or may not be making today or in the future. I know that I personally spend a lot of time on the phone, too much perhaps, or texting seven days a week, answering the same questions that, you know, I believe the, the transmission manufacturers are trying to curb with their advertisements, thus cutting down their time on the phone, trying to get to an end result where you're both getting what you want. It is definitely a shame that the phrase even exists, that the buck stops at the Bellhausen. People just want to take the ostrich approach, bury the head in the sand on a piece of equipment that directly relates to all the performance of your vehicle. Transmission and torque converter are key. They're as, if not more important than the engine. So the engine can't do anything without the transmission and vice versa, I guess. But you get what I'm saying. Many people don't understand and there's really no good place, hopefully this becomes it, to understand what you actually need for your safety and performance. And it's from here where you'll start to see the divide between the racer that does a lot of the stuff himself, probably if you're watching my channel, you're probably headed that direction, or you're already there. Oh, and, and the guy that just has plain money and is gonna buy everything. There's a lot less understanding that goes on over here. I just read a post the night before last, I guess on the DIY Turbo 400 farm, when the, you know, the guy, he paid money for a transmission and then he shouldn't have to touch it, and somebody's going to fix it for him. Turns out he's the one that made it, made a mistake and messed it up. Big surprise. But that attitude will get you nowhere. And that is an excellent segue into my next point. Pick any touring racing series. This is where you're semi-professional or professional, and you are out on the road going to a scheduled amount of events. Take the newest kid on the block, the NPK. No prep kings. I was watching a video just the other night at the cost of your average entry level turnkey no prep kings race car. That's $400,000 for just the car. That's not the truck and trailer and it's not any spare parts. Now, if you are traveling on the road, you have a spare everything. Just because you paid $10,000 for a Rossler or an m and if you're anybody that's anybody, you probably have one of those two brand transmissions because they're the best right now. You have a second one in your trailer. Now, if you're that guy that, you know, spent whatever he spent on his lesser transmission and he thinks that somebody should fix it because he spent money, take a look at the touring professional. He has two of them and he's not crying when one breaks. He knows... That's the inevitable thing that's going to happen. He has a spare. Just because he spent $100,000 on an engine, it may put a rod out on the first pass. And he's not crying to the manufacturer. Because that's not how it works. At this level or that level of performance. But let's come back down to earth for what us regular people can understand. In our budgets, even at your local weekend racer level, there's very little warranty on any speed parts, if any. And usually if there is a warranty, it is 
manufacturer's defects, not abuse from racing it every weekend. That's just the reality of racing. There are definitely situations where some companies will give a 90-day warranty, usually against, again, manufacturer defects. Or you can purchase, kind of like additional insurance. I know, you know a popular torque converter company, probably more than one, for an additional $199, you can have a lifetime warranty on your torque converter. That's actually a pretty good deal because that's about one trip back to have it worked on. I don't know if that covers adjustments. That's probably a failure. And that's where the details might get sticky. But hey, that's for you to read the fine print and work out. I see some really, really expensive, for instance, 700 I-4s. We're talking a five or $6,000 transmission that they give you a three-year warranty. That's a pretty good gamble for both parties, I guess, because you're dealing with a bomb, but they probably all don't break. So, But your average race part is not warranted. Your average race transmission or engine is not warranty. That's when you are best to develop their relationship with your engine builder, your transmission builder, your race car builder, whatever. And you guys can work it out. I say guys, let me preface this. Most of the people watching my channel are men, unfortunately. But I don't care if you're a man or woman. Guy is just a car term. I believe uh, the guy from McGuire has covered that pretty good. You know, if you're a car guy, it doesn't matter your gender. So let's get that out there right of the way. I kind of slipped a couple times and said guys, but guys is guys. So if you're in the market for an engine, transmission, rear end, whatever, it definitely pays, and it's never been any easier than to poke around the internet, just type in your subject matter, do some reading. That way at least you have some common talking points when you're talking to the place or person that's going to provide a service for you. It makes the whole process a lot easier. Feel free to ask opinions or advice. I'm sure everybody has one and some. There's no question exactly like other parts of life. The more you know, the easier everything happens. For instance, if you have trouble, don't overreact. An example, like if this transmission, when it's finished, leaves here, I know it's clean. If it was to come back full of metal or debris, it didn't leave here that way. Therefore, it had to come from the torque converter or the cooler circuit. So blaming your transmission guy on a converter or some other problem, well, you got to isolate it. Now, this could be an arduous process, very frustrating, but again, back to the relationship, I haven't had this happen, and I give everybody the same speech that it better come, you better go home and make sure your cool is clean, flush it both directions, you need a new torque converter. If your converter is just like new, if I took your transmission apart and it's not full of metal and torque converter material and thrust washers. I have a torque converter flusher, which is pretty rare. I'm lucky to have it. I got lucked into it. I've been in the transmission industry most of my life. I've never seen one before. So I'm glad I have it. It works awesome. So if, if somebody brings me their perfectly good torque converter and I'm going to just freshen up their transmission, I'll flush out the torque converter for them. So that's a good service. Maybe there's more out there. I just have never seen one in my travels. From a builder's perspective, I'm just a small one guy shop. Let's say I did 50 transmissions last year and 50 the year before. You know what I'm saying, 50 before that. I'm 57 years old. I've done a lot of transmissions for other people. It's a lot of relationships, a lot of phone calls to get them what they needed. And I feel pretty lucky and blessed. I mean, I guess, I don't know if luck is the right word. I try really hard to not have failures, but it's going to happen. I mean, my phone is not ringing off the hook. It's not ringing at all. Pretty much they leave and everything goes silent sometimes. <laughs> well, so it seems, uh, I, I get calls, you never know when. I got a call last year, the guy's at the track and his cooler broke. I wanna know if he could run it without a cooler. 
He had a gauge, a transmission temperature gauge. I said, go ahead. If it breaks, we'll fix it. That's always my attitude. If something goes wrong, we're just going to fix it. No big deal. If it's my fault, then I'll tell you so. If it's your fault or somebody else's fault, so be it. It's not a big deal. Things break. You just got to fix it. No big deal. I got p piles of parts and, well, not lots of time, but that's the way it goes. So, I, again, I feel lucky. I'm going to knock on wood once again. Things are going smooth. Multiply that, if this was a shop full of people, that is a lot of transmissions a year that somebody has to, you know, set up, sell, service, make the customer happy. That is a big mouthful. I think I'll be happy being a one guy shop. I think I have an advantage, and I don't talk about this very much, but I don't have a crew of people with families. I don't need to pump out X amount of transmissions every day. I don't need to build and sell transmissions I don't believe in. If somebody calls me, and this happens quite a bit, and they're you're putting a turbo LS in something and they want to put a 4L60, 700i4, same transmission. I won't take their money. I won't do it. I'm, they, they sell them for 5,000 bucks. Go buy one of those. But for that money, you could have a turbo 400 or a 4L80E. I'm just not going to get involved in that level of frustration because I'm going to be nervous. Something's going to go wrong. I value my reputation. You know, you're going to be upset when it breaks because you got a lot of money into it. It's, you can't overcome poor engineering. I mean, that transmission won't take it. I, Turbo 350s, I got one sitting here on the floor. It's a name brand. I don't know if you saw it in the background. If you did, we're going to talk about it one of these days. I might end up with it in trade. It's broken. It's not worth much. But same situation. Somebody paid a lot of money for that. And here it sits on the floor broken. And we're going to put a good transmission in it. So that's the way it is. So I'm fortunate that I don't have to take your money. You know, I'm going to eat tonight. It might be ramen noodles, but I'm not going to have to worry about your 4L60 blowing up. If you've got a stock K5 Blazer or, sorry, my F regulator's blowing off. Or you're building a little street rod that you're just going to putt around in. That's a great transmission for that. And even those... I tell the people the same thing. Every time you put your foot to the floor, remember when you were paying me because you're going to speed up that process of having to pay me again if you spend a lot of time with your foot to the floor with a weak transmission. Well, that's it, I guess, for tonight. The moral of the story is it pays to be an informed consumer and patient. A patient, informed consumer. You'll be happier in the long run. This is hot rodding. There's nothing going on that should be that upsetting. If it is, perhaps hot rodding's not for you. But I hope so. I hope you stick around. Speaking of sticking around, I'll be back in a day or so, and we'll do something else, hopefully, that catch it, captures your attention. So have a great night. Catch you in a couple days.